Drake May isn't the only Tar Heel off to the NFL, but he'll be the hardest to replace. But what other positions are going to be the most difficult next man up for Mac Brown? You are Locked On Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Friday, May 24th, 2024. Welcome into the Locked On Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shea, joined today by our guide, Denora Cersei, with a fly Cameroon uh, quarter zip <laughs> soccer hoodie on. I love it. Yeah. You're joining us at the place to get your Tar Heels content every single day. Thanks for making us your first listen or watch. I want to send a special shout out to all you everydayers out there, as well as all the members of the Locked On Tar Heels Discord community. We're so glad that you're all here. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Hey, we do have two shows going on today. Our other Friday show, we're talking about Ven Allen Lubin committing to the Tar Heels for basketball, the 11th uh, scholarship player on the roster. So make sure you check that out as well. As for what Denoris and I are talking about today, we're looking back to the NFL draft a little bit. We want to talk about outside of the quarterback position, what's going to be the hardest uh, to replace following the draft. We want to look at what players are going to be the best fit with where they were drafted, both draftees and UDFAs, undrafted free agents. And then I want to ask the Norris uh, a couple other things as well. So we'll get to that all coming up on the show. So Denoris, obviously we know Drake May is off to the Patriots third overall pick. But there were two other Tar Heels selected in the draft and then five undrafted free agents as well. Let me just rattle those off so everyone has it in their brain. Uh, that's Cedric Gray off to the Titans, fourth round pick, 106 overall. Tez Walker to the Ravens, fourth round as well, 113 overall. And then, excuse me, the UDFAs are Amari Gaynor, Tamari Fox, both off to the Raiders, Miles Murphy to the Cardinals, our guy British Brooks to the Texans, and Spencer Rolland, the big man from the Ivy League, is off to the Vikings. So, Denoris, as you look at that, outside of Drake May, I mean, you've got guys from all sorts of different positions. Other than the quarterback, what's the hardest of these to replace next year for the Tar Heels? Uh, I would say that, that defensive front, Miles Murphy was such a – Miles Murphy and uh, Tamari Fox and uh, Amari Gaynor was such a force up up front. Um, they was good at, against the run. They was good at applying pressure to the quarterback. So just finding guys to replace them. Um, I, I feel like uh, we all we all got a solid guy and uh, Amari Campbell replacing said at linebacker next to Power Eccles who's still there. So I feel like that the linebacker position is pretty pretty still still strong. Uh, Coach Coach Tommy Thibodeau always have a good good core guys in that linebacker room that always able to hold a bus together. So it seemed like it seems like they reload in the linebacker room. Uh, not say the D line can do it, they can't do it, but we we are missing at least three three guys that was very productive in their time with Carolina. I mean Tamari Fox missed a a year and came yeah. back and still was very productive in this final year at UNC. So that's a that's a big that was a, that was a big positive. But it was also a, also a blow to our defense. Um we just need guys to step up. Um, hopefully, Travis Shaw could come into his own and do his thing. Um, we have some more recruits that's coming in. Hopefully, they could fill that void, and we can have like at least a three, four man rotation. I, I see we got we got the transfer from Ole Miss, so he's gonna be called upon a lot, which I'm pretty sure he's he's excited with that. He gets to play right <laughs> away. So, uh, but yeah, man. I mean, I would say I would say Tez on at receiver, but we got so many guys in receivers that can plug and play. We got guys coming back that was on the team that was productive before Tez came. So uh, they're just I'm, I'm pretty sure they're pretty excited. I mean, I know they hate to see Tez go, but I'm pretty sure they're they're eager to, to realize they're gonna have more opportunities at uh, at the ball now that uh, Tez has moved on to the next level. Yeah. I think that's very well assessed, Norris, because as you said, both both at the linebacking and at that receiver position, and not even just the wide receivers. I mean, Carolina might be the best tight end room in the nation. If not, they got to be way up right. there, man, with, with oh what they've God. got coming. I mean, it's just insane what they've had these last several years and will have again this year. But it, it is that defensive front, man, that I think we continue – 
uh, to worry about and be concerned about. But I mean, as, as you think about somebody like Travis Shaw, you mentioned him and I, th- I think it, his role feels like it's so critical this year. Is this, is this a year you think he finally takes that big leap rounds into shape, both uh, like physically and, and with his on, on field play? Uh, it's, it, he needs to make that leap. He's, he's, He's too big, man, to not be as dominant as he should be, man. He's he's a guy he could it, you had you can't block him with one person. You shouldn't be able to block him with one person. So if and if if he gets if he gets single team if he gets a single block every time he should feel disrespected. He should dominate every time. I like uh, a couple of practices I went to. I seen him pick linemen up and move about the way like they was a piece of furniture. So <laughs> I'm eager to see it out. Like I said, like as long as he stays in shape and he's able to stay on the field more. And he's able to continue to grow. He he should he should and he needs to take take that leap to be a dominant defense alignment because uh, the sky's the limit for him. Um, I remember when I first met him, he was still he was still seventeen, and, and um um it was amazing to see the, the the size and the girth on this kid, man. And just just knowing he was just still coming to his own. He was an early enrollee, so he has it. He was like I said, he was still seventeen years old, and just. Un- untapped potential. I know Coach uh, Montecino is going to bring about, bring it out of him because Coach Montecino is a former NFL uh, uh, coach who's coached like Haloti Nala and Terrell Suggs and all of them. And, and Travis Shaw can be on that type of level, be that type of productive as a player. So I, I'm I really hope he comes to it his own and be and be that dominant up front. With him dominating, that frees up Amari Campbell and and Power Echoes to just feel be flow. free and just run, flow and run to the ball, man, because they're there are guys that can get down here quick. So, um, I, like I said, I hope I hope he I hope he comes into his own. You, you brought up a great point, Norris. It's funny that you said this because I was literally going to follow up by asking you that. Is how big a deal? Like I know a lot of times when we get new coordinators in or new position coaches, there's a negative connotation of like, oh, it's his fourth offensive coordinator in four years at school. But sometimes. A, a new position coach, a new coordinator can kind of unlock things a little bit. It seems like to me, is there some credence to that of like, hey, maybe for Travis Shaw specifically, getting in Coach Collins as the new coordinator, having Coach Monachino now be able to, you know, be more hands on and be there uh, positionally. How how helpful can that be, maybe for Travis? Well, I mean, it could be it could be great. I mean, necessarily changing of a position coach or a coordinator, it's it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Um, I can relate to uh, not necessarily college, but the NFL. Like my first four years in in the NFL, every year in Buffalo, I had a new defensive coordinator. Like my very first year, we was a three four. My my second year, we was a four three. My third year, we was a modified three four, and then my last year, we was a four three. So I was, dude, my first. Five years in the NFL, I had five different tablets every year. Because my fifth year, I went to Tennessee, and I was back in the uh, three, four fires, fire zone underneath uh, Dick LeBeau. So my first five years, I had to learn something new every year. Now, uh, I had productive years every year, but I feel like my best my best years in Buffalo was my third and fourth year. Um, the, the modified three, four on the Mike Patton was – Real good. I was able. I was able to be uh, use more of my athletic ability with my knowledge of the game, um, because in Mike Pettin's d- defense, I played. Dude, I played like seven positions. We had like, dude, we had like eight different packages. I was a. I was in a different position each package. Like one one package, I was the safety. Another package, I was the wheel linebacker. One package, I was the Mike linebacker. One package, I was. A, <laughs> I was a uh, I was a nickel. Another package, I was the boundary corner. Another package, I was the the, the jack rusher off the edge so it was you know it was it i felt like i was back in high school a little bit but moving all over like that allowed me to learn the whole defense right. it That's allowed right. me it, it allowed me to learn like different pass rush schemes from the front because i had to I had to be mindful of the uh the guys up front when i was blitzing as a linebacker so i had to I had to study like the fronts and the movement so i wouldn't Run up, run up the guys back and, and, and trip them up. I think a couple times I tripped, I tripped like Kyle Williams at one time in practice because I was too early in the blitz. I, I ran, I ran into the back of Mario Williams one time because I was too early in the blitz. You know what I'm saying? So I had to, had to find that, 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 that common ground of, of being able to like know when to attack and when not to attack. And uh, going back to the emphasis with uh, Travis Shaw and the other guys on the defense, maybe, maybe learning from a new coach and a new scheme can unlock things that you're more 
comfortable doing it because in high school I was a raw athlete. I just the ball was the issue, run to the ball. Then uh, going to college, I had to learn, you know, just stay in my stay in my spot, do my do my one eleven in the defense, my assignment. But that third year in the NFL, I was back to being that kid in high school again. I could go anywhere. I was playing four, five, six, seven different positions. I was able to move around and move freely, make adjustments. It gave me more confidence and being able to be in more control of the scheme and knowing what I needed to do. So I, 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 it's not always necessarily a bad thing. And I believe with, with uh, coaches that more hands-on and coaches that have been on every level, they seen I'm, – I'm pretty sure these coaches seen guys – not necessarily the same size as Travis Shaw, but with with that with the athletic ability to be able to get them to move around and get the most out of them, I believe they'll be able to help them and they'll be able to um, bring the best out of him and bring the best out of a guy of that size and that statue and he's and, and allows him to be that dominant. It'll do it won't do nothing but help the defense a lot tremendously. Man, great insight there, and that's wild. To th- how fun to just get to float around like that in a system, in a scheme, and and so I, I love to hear that, man. Now, we do want to look more at specifically at where the Tar Heels are headed off to in the pros, and I want to ask the Norris the question, who's in the best position? Who landed at the best spot for them to be able to flourish pretty quickly in the NFL? We're going to have that conversation coming up in just a second. Right after I tell you about FanDuel, it's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. How about game two of the Western Conference Finals? Mavs, Wolves, Dallas Mavericks favored by five and an over under of 207 and a half. If you want to get in on that action, visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, now we do want to look ahead from the Tar Heels. We want to look ahead to these pro Tar Heels and where they've landed. As a reminder, we named them off, but there's eight Tar Heels that were either drafted or went as undrafted free agents somewhere. Drake May said gray. Uh, Tez Walker, I just got caught up because Drake May and said Gray rhymes so well, and I'd never thought about it before, man. They need to be together, the Gray May duo. Um, and Tez Walker, all three of these guys are actually drafted. And then Amari Gaynor, Tamari Fox, Miles Murphy, British Brooks, and Spencer Rolland, all UDFAs off to various teams. Pretty cool that Gaynor and Fox are together uh, with the Raiders right now. So, Absolutely. Norris, as you look at these eight guys, and, and not just – where they went, but, you know, thinking about depth chart stuff or fit within a scheme, who do you think is in the best place right now? Right now, I would say Sid Gray. First off, shout out to Sid and Tez, fourth rounders. You know, I was, I was fourth round as well when I came out. Let's go. So I'm always, I'm always rooting for that. Uh, I would say Sid Gray, because I'm not mistaken, I think Tennessee runs a similar defense to what Sid is, is, has ran in North Carolina with the three – uh, with the three uh four scheme, that's right. So, so I feel like he he'll be a guy that'll be able to adapt sooner, uh, quicker than the the three that was drafted. Uh, of course, Tez going to Baltimore, being that deep deep threat. You know, guys are gonna stack the box to stop Derrick Henry and uh Lamar Lamar Jackson. So that leaves Tez one on one outside, and everybody knows Tez can fly. So <laughs> and uh what people may think uh, Lamar Jackson has a great arm. So he's gonna be able to throw that thing downfield to Tez. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. I know for sure I'm gonna be watching more Baltimore and I'm gonna be watching more New England because yeah. because of Drake May. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I just wanna I just wanna see him do good, man. That's a that's a tough the NFL is tough, man, and you're going to have your ups and your downs. But just being able to see guys on teams that you know, and, like, i seen, I seen most of these guys since they was 18, 19, 20 years old. So now that they get the chance to live out their dream, I'm hoping for nothing but the best for them. Um, it was it was kind of hard. I, I thought Miles Murphy would be a guy that get drafted. Yeah. Uh, but – uh, unfortunately, how it shakes out, he did it. Um, he's a hard worker, though. I feel like he's gonna he's gonna come. Uh, he's gonna have his chance to make this make the squad with Arizona. British Brooks is a guy who's already been behind the eight ball before. He's he's a former walk on who came in, did the little things, worked his butt off, man, and earned the scholarship. 
So it's going to be nothing new to British. British going to come out there. He's going to be productive. What's going to help British is his, his willingness and his ability to play special teams. So if even if he is a second or third back on the depth chart, what what will help keep British around is his ability to play special teams, even though he's a running back. Yeah. Um, Amari Gaynor, Tamir Fox being in Oakland. I mean, no. See, it's, 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 it's Vegas now. I, I I didn't get to play the, the Raiders when they went that's to right. Vegas. Now, I've been in the Oakland Coliseum three times. So that's I right. Seen, oh, I've seen the black hole as, as, as right, 30s, man. you know. So, you know, I, I've been in Oakland when the field was still in baseball season. So we had yes. to play on the, on the hard on the hard rocks. Oh, and that's whatnot, gross. You know? so, that's so gross. But I'm but I'm 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 happy for them. They all got an opportunity. So yep. that, that's the main thing. You make the most out of your opportunity. Um, what I would tell the guys that went undrafted, always put your best on tape. Always hmm. put your best on tape in the in the preseason and whatnot, because not only are the teams you're on watching these cut ups, every team around the NFL is watching these cut ups. That's right. So if you don't make that squad, you have a chance of somebody picking you up because I I've seen it. I've seen guys come in. Uh, I've been in training camps where we had guys that they was good, but we just couldn't keep them because of the numbers. So as soon as we released them, somebody snatched them like that because they was productive the whole preseason. So interesting. So you never, so you never know. You never know who's watching. You never know who could come along and pick you up off a team. I'm just, I'm happy for all of them that they, they they get the opportunity, they get the opportunity to live out their their childhood dreams or whatnot. They just got to make the most of their opportunities. Be be constant pros. Whenever the number is called, make plays because in this in the NFL, it's all about production. Uh, the more you can produce and the more you can do, it keeps you around a lot longer in this league. I, I love your points there, specifically about somebody like British Brooks. I mean, I think about how many running backs these days, and, and I, I really feel for running backs and how that position has been devalued in some ways. You know, it just seems like it, people think of right. running backs kind of dime a dozen, Not but like they used to. But for somebody like British Brooks, I think that could be a win in this day and age where it's like, dude, you just keep being productive. And as you said, whether it's with the Texans or some other team that's like, we need a guy that just works his butt off, whether it's on special teams or is willing to get in there and, and pass protect, whatever it is, uh, that, that that could mean something good for British. Um, Absolutely. And, so, and, that's, yeah. and that's what that, – especially in the NFL because you know, the roster is just 53. I mean, that's right. you have – it's 63 total because you got your 10 that's on practice squad, but it's 53. And then, like I said, the more you could do, like um, the more positions that you could plug in, plug a guy in and play and help the team win. Because the end of the day, is all about winning and, and being productive. And, and productive will, will keep you in this league long. And, um, and, and as long as you can stay healthy with that as well, man, you have a chance to make a lot of money in this league and play for a very long time. So, um, yeah, because the, the more you show that you're reliable, yeah, every, every uh, coaches and teams love you for that because they know they can count on you. And as long as you're dependable and you're and you're always held accountable and they can trust you in any position, man, that that'll keep you around for a long time. Like have have the reason I stayed in the league as long as I was because I was always willing to play special teams. Like mm-hmm. it was it was times I would be on teams and the special team coach would be like, Denarius, you don't have to come in this special team meeting." And I used to get offended. Like, why not? I want to be in the meeting. Like, <laughs> first off, I stayed. First off, I stayed on kickoff. One no coming off kickoff like that, like kickoff was technically like my first snap of defense. It gave me a chance to get a good run, to get you going, get your feet wet in the game. But so so I was with I was always willing to play uh special teams. And I remember a couple of times just by me sitting in meetings, we'll be in the middle of a game and it's not even a position that I practice, but <laughs> we may have a guy having equipment malfunction or a guy that ran in the locker room early for IV and coach is like, oh man, He's scrambling because he needs a guy to go play this one particular position for one snap, and, and he'll come get me because he know <laughs> he's a like, hated. And I, I've been there because like, you stay ready. That's right. right. And, and, and then he was like, "Hey man, I know you ain't you ain't practiced this, you ain't you, uh, but I know you've been in meetings, and I know you know what the hell to do. So I need you to just go out here for this one rep. Um, we just need you for this one snap, and then uh, the other guy should be back." Um, by the next by the next rep, and I'm like, okay, cool. I get up and go play it. So that's what that's another thing that kept me around, kept the coaches uh, wanting me on teams and, and things of that nature. Man, the more you could do, I love it. Well, we'll certainly keep our eyes on on Sed Gray and Tez Walker. You know, I, I they both already at every depth chart I've looked at right now are our second positionally. 
Um, and so, I mean, big chance. And, and as much as you hate it for guys ahead of them, one, one heartbeat, one bad snap away from them uh, stepping up into a, a starting role and getting even more reps. So certainly Absolutely. big opportunities for those guys as well. And we'll keep our eyes on all five of these undrafted free agents. It's obviously a tough uh, road to go, to walk, as Denoris has said. But, man, you show out and show up and are responsible. I love, I love what you're saying there. And they might be the guy. Now, somebody we haven't talked about yet is Drake May. There's so <laughs> much conversation always with highly drafted quarterbacks. Should they start from day one? Or should they hang out and hold the clipboard for a year and be ready for year two or beyond? We're going to have that conversation coming up in just a second. Right after I tell you about game time, I am stoked for the NBA playoffs going on right now. Like, it would be so cool to get to one of these games. Just a couple hours from me is Dallas, so I could head down there. Well, great news. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. In fact, prices on their app, on the game time app, they go down the closer to tip off you get. They've got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and a lowest price guarantee. With all of that, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. I just uh, talked a little bit ago about the Minnesota uh, and Mavericks game. Well, up in Minnesota right now, multiple seats in the upper room ring for game two, under $200. I saw one for 161 bucks. Or if I want to go to Dallas for game three coming up this weekend, I can get in the door for under 200 on game time. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, Drake May, Denoris Cersei, winds up <laughs> in New England, the place, the one place I should say. A lot of Tar Heel fans and a lot of people who just wanted to see good things for Drake May didn't want him to go because it's just not, it's wild to think this about New England, but to a lot of people, it's not what it was throughout the whole Tom Brady, Bill Belichick run. Uh, there, there's not as many uh, weapons around. There's not, you know, there's just a lot that's not there in New England right now. And so there's a lot of conversation. Should Drake May start year one or not? Got Jacoby Brissett there as well. Denoris, I'm very curious on your take on this matter. Um, uh, me personally, uh, I didn't I didn't I'm pretty cool with Drake. I was pretty cool with Drake going to New England. I mean, of course, it's always the elephant in the room who's gonna you're you still replacing one of the uh one of if not the greatest QB of all time. In my book, he Tom Brady is my goat, like for nice. Plan to get some 10 times, only ever beat him twice. <laughs> Hell man, that, that's my damn goal. I seen him, I seen him in action. Like I seen him up close and personal. Like I saw the blue steely look in his eyes when right before he threw a touchdown on us. So I knew God, I know, I know the demand. I don't know the man, but I, the, the player, I respect him the, like the, the most, you know. So um coming now, coming now, I mean, you you can't be too I didn't care. Like me personally, I didn't care where I went. Hmm. If the team, if, it, if Alaska had an NFL team and they drafted <laughs> me, I would have took myself to Alaska. You know what I'm saying? To play football. It don't matter. I'm playing football. So, uh, but it's just it's just the fact that you're always uh, you're always you going to a historic place that was built up behind on the backs of, of Brady and Belichick and whatnot. Um, I believe they got some more weapons there, though. I believe they they brought some guys in do a uh, free AC and they drafted well. Um, like you said, Jacoby Brissett is there, but I, I'm leaning more so towards Drake Drake May playing. You know, you got a you got a rookie coach in Gerard Mayo who I played against. Um, he was in New England, and with a rookie coach and a rookie quarterback, it gives them a chance to grow together. Hmm. So I would I if he, if he proves he can handle it through the OTAs and mini camp phase, and he continues to get better doing training camp and those preseason games. Um, yes, I play him now. I know uh, Jacoby Brissett has the more experience because he's been there the longest. But you don't draft a guy third overall to sit on the bench. Like, yeah, Aaron Rodgers sat on the bench, but Aaron Rodgers didn't go top five. You know what I'm saying? And also, Brett Favre was still there being productive. You know what I'm saying? So, like you see, Alex Smith went one overall, 
And I don't even know who the quarterback was there in San Francisco, but QB number one overall is not going to ride the bench. Like, there's there's no way. You know, we like I said, we had – like I said, we had uh, three quarterbacks going to the top five. I don't think – now one of them guys is going to ride the bench their first year. Now, if he gets out there and he's struggling too much and they see they need to pull him back a little bit and put Jacoby in, then, then I will see him. All right, we tried you this first three, four weeks. Still, you still have some things you need to learn, so we're gonna sit you down so you can keep learning, keep you keep you keep you healthy, but we'll let you also keep learning and keep prepping, and we'll go at this thing next year. Or if something happens to Jacoby, we'll put you back in. But I do it's I don't think it's a scenario where I don't I don't see Drake starting week one. There it is. You heard it from Denoris. I don't see a world where Drake May isn't starting in week one. Can't wait to see how that comes together and what the Patriots look like when they take the field this fall. Great stuff from Denoris as always. Such a pleasure to have him join us. If you're not subscribed to the show on audio and video, please go do that right now. It's super easy to do. Find your favorite podcast platform. Hit subscribe to Locked on Tar Heels. Do the same if you're watching on YouTube and hit that bell notification so you get notified every time a new episode drops or we go live on YouTube. If you're not part of the Locked on Tar Heels Discord community, make sure you hop into that as well. The link for it is in the show notes, and it's free to join. We'd love to have you. Come for the Tar Heels, stay for the community. Don't forget, again, we have a second episode out today where we're talking all about Ben Allen Lubin's commitment to North Carolina and an update on all the other sports going on this weekend. A nice win for Tar Heels baseball on Thursday to kick off the ACC tournament play for them. Huge game tonight, Friday. It's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. We'll talk again on Monday. But until then, peace.